the final battle just freaking ended. Bakugo returned, Deku killed All for One and Shigaraki with One for All's quirk singularity, and I think this is it. I think the story might be basically over, like we're probably only a couple of chapters away from the end of MHA, so we need to talk about it. You guys, all this works. If you enjoy my MHA content and you want to see more in the future, leave a quick like and comment for that YouTube algorithm. And if you still haven't subscribed, remember that subscribing on YouTube is completely free and it helps me out a lot, so please subscribe right now. In the last chapter, we saw literally everyone on the battlefield doing their best to help carve out a path for Deku to reach All for One. Even though Deku apparently no longer possesses One for All, everyone decided that the only way to defeat All for One was to allow Deku to smash him one more time with the full power of the One for All embers that still remained inside his body. All for One tried to use the activation of all of his quirk factors at the same time to destroy the heroes, including of course Deku, but because all the heroes and hero students on the battlefield did their best to protect Deku, and because Deku knew that the whole world was watching him and rooting for him, in the end he managed to push his way through to All for One and land a punch on the villain's chest. This incredible display of determination and teamwork moved everyone in the world who was watching the fight, including of course Deku's mom Inko, but also the president President of the United States. Upon seeing Deku and the other heroes giving it their all in this fight, the US president ordered his subordinates to send every American hero to Japan to help in the fight against All for One. This was a complete reversal of the US's previous policy, which was not to interfere because they didn't want to anger All for One, because if All for One ended up winning against the heroes in Japan, he could then move on to threaten the US next. Deku's determination and his willingness to keep fighting against all odds despite being an underdog is literally changing the world, and it is straight up shifting the nature of international relations in the world of MHA in real time. But despite all the hype, the chapter ended on a cliffhanger. We saw Deku landing his punch on All for One, but we didn't get to see the aftermath or the consequences of that punch. We were left to speculate about what would happen next. Would Deku win the fight with this? Would the attack fail? Would One for All activate again within Deku as he makes contact with All for One's body? And so on. The latest chapter picks up at the exact point where Deku lands that epic punch on All for One's chest. The villain is confused, because not only did he fail to stop Deku's attack, but he also failed to notice that the body he is currently inhabiting doesn't seem to be using super regeneration. Instead of automatically regenerating every time he takes damage, All for One's vessel seems to be crumbling to pieces. What's more, even though all these heroes and hero students on the battlefield are not individually threatening to All for One, Together, their teamwork and their determination were able to both get Deku close enough to land a punch and dull All for One's senses in general. Meanwhile, over the past two years, Deku has been working day and night to master the power of One for All and to crystallize the power of nine different people into a single overpowered quirk singularity. And so, as Deku channels all of his remaining power into that one single punch, All for One's body begins to literally crumble apart and his various quirks begin to vanish from the battlefield. In a final desperate move, All for One starts using his various quirks to force his body to stop crumbling. He uses all those tendrils and spikes to essentially pin his body parts back together and keep himself from crumbling to pieces. Deku is clearly not the only one with borderline superhuman determination. For his entire life, All for One has been determined to achieve his true dream, to become the one and only immortal and indisputable demon lord. Even now, All for One refuses to give up on that dream, and even though his current vessel is falling apart, he thinks that he can still win if he can transfer his All for One quirk factor onto someone else. Either Deku or another hero or hero student on the battlefield. If he can transfer his quirk factor, that will also transfer over his personality, and then he can take over that new vessel from within and just keep fighting until all the heroes are dead. Deku screams at All for One to stop, and he approaches for another attack, but he doesn't seem to realize what the villain is planning. All for One wants Deku to come closer because he wants to transfer his quirk factor into Deku, so he opens his arms in an attempt to make physical contact with him and to complete the transfer. Even though Deku and the other heroes don't seem to be aware of what exactly All for One is planning, Kurogiri seems to sense what is about to happen, and Oboro Shirakumo within the Nomu begins to awaken yet again. Now in the last chapter, it was established that Kurogiri was pretty much drained after using all of those warp gates, and he seemed to be barely holding himself together. However, in this chapter he decides that he must do one final thing, even if it kills him, 
he must save Deku from becoming All for One's vessel, and he must also save Tomura Shigaraki from remaining an eternal slave to All for One. Kurokiri aka Oboro Shirakumo says to his childhood friends, Shota, Yamada, I'm sorry. He has to go now, he has to protect Tomura Shigaraki. And so Kurogiri creates one final warp gate in between All for One and Deku, and this prevents All for One from making contact with Deku and transferring his quirk factor into the hero. This also effectively prevents All for One from possessing Deku's body and using him as his next vessel. A crying present Mike says that he knew this would happen because no matter when and no matter where, Oboro Shirakumo always reaches out to help those in need, even after becoming an Omu. Kurogiri says, All for One, please give back Tomura Shigaraki. His friends are waiting. But as he says this, the warp gate between All for One and Deku begins to crumble away, symbolizing the fact that Kurogiri himself is crumbling and falling apart. Then, just as the warp gate dissipates, Bakugo flies in out of nowhere and I guess kind of pushes Deku forward to help him attack All for One. Although he also looks like he's trying to like bite All for One or something. Mike yells for Bakugo to get out of there and get to a freaking hospital, but Bakugo says he flew here using his explosions and then he used Todoroki's ice as a jump board in order to get there. Bakugo says watch out or else I'll surpass you, Izuku, but then he just kind of is blown away so I'm not sure what Bakugo's contribution here actually was other than showing up at an important moment for the sake of the fans. I guess maybe he pushed Deku forward and distracted All for One long enough for Deku to attack him and so he helped prevent All for One's attempted takeover of Deku's body, maybe? Let me know down in the comments how you feel about Bakugo's extremely brief comeback. Anyway, Deku says, I'll never forgive you All for One, but he also adds that he doesn't think that All for One is some monster beyond understanding or some evil demon king. Just like with Shigaraki, Deku is trying to see the human side of All for One, and he is trying to understand how All for One came to be this monstrous villain that he has become. As Deku hits All for One one last time, he says that in the end, All for One is just a truly lonely man. And as Deku says this, we see the lonely vestige of All for One inside the vestige world, noticing a small flame that he identifies as a fragment of his brother, Yoichi. The flame begins to speak in Yoichi's voice, and it says that before transferring all the one for all quirk factors into Shigaraki's body, Deku left a small fragment of Yoichi's vestige inside himself. This final fragment was woken up as Deku used up the final embers of one for all in his attack. Yoichi's flame says that Deku really wants to complete one for all in the right way, whatever that means exactly. But then somewhat surprisingly, we see All for One's vestige become extremely emotional. He seems glad that some fragment of Yoichi still remains, and he yells at the flame not to leave him and to show him his brother's face. The flame replies that it's impossible because it is going to disappear, but All for One becomes even more agitated when he hears this, and he screams that Yoichi is his and he has to show himself right now. Yoichi responds calmly with, Big brother, I wasn't able to guide you. This is what Midoriya kun noticed, so now he is offering us one final salvation. And then somewhat shockingly, All for One says, No, I won't allow it. I love you. I am nothing without you. And so it seems that All for One did actually love his younger brother after all. For their entire lives, All for One acted like he only wanted his brother around because he saw his younger brother as his property, something that belonged to him and that he had the right to control as he saw fit. But in reality, it seems that All for One did really love his brother, but he just didn't know how to express that love in a proper way. Because of his hard life and his warped ambitions, All for One couldn't differentiate love from control, and he couldn't differentiate family from property. This is actually really sad in a way, and it almost makes you feel sorry for All for One. I mean, obviously, this doesn't excuse anything he's done. But just imagine living like that. Just imagine being so emotionally warped that you actually love your brother, but the only way you know how to treat him is as your property and as a prisoner. Deku is right. All for one must have been truly lonely for his entire life. Because if he treated his own brother this way, then you know he treated everyone else this way too. He probably never had a friend or anyone truly close to him because he treated everyone as chess pieces and pieces of property. Yoichi says that it's time for All for One to pay for the crime of using so many people for his own selfish ends. 
The flame of Yoichi is not the only flame that woke up when Deku made contact with All For One during this final attack. And then we see the vestiges of the other former One For All users and even the vestige of the real Tomura Shigaraki approaching All For One's vestige from behind. Then, just as I predicted so many times in my previous MHA videos, All For One is attacked at the same time on two fronts. In the outside world, he is attacked by Deku with the final embers of One For All, and in the inside world, he is attacked by the vestiges of the former One For All users and by the vestige of Tomura, aka Tenko Shimura. In that moment, as he is torn apart from both the outside and the inside, All For One is finally destroyed once and for all. At least that's what it seems like in Shonen You Never Know 100% for sure, but it seems that All For One finally paid for his crimes and disappeared into the void along with the final fragments of his brother Yoichi. A brother whom he apparently loved, but also mistreated because he didn't know how to show basic human compassion. We see a symbolic and somewhat accidental fist bump happening between Deku and Tomura as Tomura's body disintegrates. And in his last moments, Tomura reveals that after All For One had swallowed his personality and he was about to disappear forever, the vestige of his grandma Nana grabbed onto him and made sure that he didn't disappear. At this point, Tomura and Deku are able to have one final conversation. Tomura says that Kurogiri was right. Even after he got his body back from All For One and was able to destroy the world, Tomura didn't manage to actually destroy anything because in the end he was just a crying brat. He wasn't even able to crush Deku's hand. Deku says that he fought because he couldn't forgive Tomura for what he had done, but he also says that he kept fighting because he knew that Tomura wanted to be stopped. Deku didn't want Tomura's sadness to be passed on to the rest of the world, and he believes that Tomura didn't want that either. Tomura says, ha, huh, and then he asks Deku for a favor. He says that if Spinner is still alive, to tell him, Tomura Shigaraki fought until the end to destroy. Deku responds by saying, and you did it. But in the end, it wasn't the world that he destroyed, it was all for one who was destroyed by Tomura's stubborn determination. The final page of the chapter shows Tomura's body dissolving completely as Deku remains alone in that corner of the sky where he and All For One had clashed just moments earlier. The text on the final chapter says, The conclusion. So it seems like this is it. The end of MHA. All For One has finally been defeated once and for all, and both he and Tomura Shigaraki are now dead, but Tomura at least got some form of redemption by choosing to fight against All For One in the end. Kurogiri is also seemingly dead now, and Deku is now presumably quirkless. Unless Horikoshi decides to troll us with yet another All For One revival or some crazy twist like that, we can expect the next few chapters to just sort of be an epilogue. The chapters will tell us what happens in the aftermath of the battle, they will tell us what will happen to the heroes now, maybe who will canonically be shipped with whom, how Japan will recover from the latest villain war, and so on. The American heroes that were dispatched by the president in the last chapter will arrive too late to fight All For One, but they'll be able to help with mopping up the remaining villains and rebuilding Japan after all that chaos and destruction. I wonder if we're about to get a time skip that reveals how Deku and the Class 1A students will be as adults. And maybe the time skip will show Eri, Kota and the next generation of hero students studying at UA. If we do get a time skip, what do you think is going to happen? Let me know down in the comments. And now that the big fight seems to be over, will Deku's father finally be revealed? Will his absence actually be explained in an interesting way? Or will it just be like an, oh yeah, he was away for like two years and no one heard from him, but that's totally normal, no big deal. I really do hope that we get a valid explanation and it doesn't just end up being an unresolved plot point forever but that's just me. If you're looking for an epic MHA video to watch next, check out my video about the 13 strongest multiple quirk users in MHA. These guys are truly the quirk gods of the series, so check out the video link on screen and in the description. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more in the future, leave a quick like to let me know. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. It is completely free, but it helps me out a lot.